short term and long term effects of exercise. The muscular system. Short term, tiredness is the first and most obvious. You should use up energy stored in the in them as you exercise. If you're doing weightlifting and lifting enough then you will break down the muscle. This is known as fatiguing the muscle. When this happens the muscle will rebuild itself but get stronger. Blood flow. Because of increased volume that is pumped to muscle tissue. Muscle exhaustion when exercise continues through muscle fatigue without rest after time it can lead to muscle exhaustion. Cramp is occurred by no oxygen reaching those specific areas which can can cause uncontrollable and very painful muscle contraction. Long term. The hypertrophy, the muscles increase in size and they also bulk. If you do lots of physical exercise on a specific muscle they will get bigger. For example, if you went to the gym to work on your biceps or triceps, then after a while they are going to increase in size and get bigger after a while. Lactic acid and aerobic training stimulates the muscles to become better to tolerate lactic acid and clear it away more efficiently. With endurance training, the capillary network extends allowing greater volumes of blood to supply the muscles within oxygen and nutrients. Muscle stores and my mitochondria. Muscle incre muscles increase their oxidative capacity, their ability to use oxygen to produce energy with regular training. This is achieved by an increase in the number of mitochondria within the muscle cells. Increase in tendon strength. Tendons are tough. Bands of fibrous connective tissue designed to withstand tension forced along their length. Like muscles, tendons adapt to the mechanical loading of regular exercise. The general adaption is increased strength, but different types of training will exert different, differing effects on muscles. Cardiovascular system. One of the short term effects of exercise is that it increases your heart rate. Your heart rate will begin to rise before you start to exercise and then your brain realises you're going to work out and releases adrenaline to speed up your heart in pre preparation for exercise. Your heart rate will to continue to rise in proportion of the intensity until maximum heart rate is achieved. The heart rate will increase the more exercise you do. Uh, changes in blood flow. At rest, the muscles only require about 15-20% to of the total amount of blood circulating through the body. During exercise, the hard working muscles demand more oxygen from the cardiovascular system and can be up to 80%. In response, blood is moved away from the digestive organs, kidney and liver and is redirected to the skeletal muscles. Blood flow is allowed, uh, is to the skin it also increases. The blood vessels serving the skin dilate to allow more blood to the surface of the body. This helps to cool the body down during exercise. Your blood, pH, the level of acidity in your blood becomes more acidic. Your body uses byproducts of carbon dioxide to buffer the hydrogen ions in your bloodstream. Hydrogen ions are electrically charged particles in your body. The greater the number of hydrogen ions, the higher the acidity. Because you breathe faster during cardiovascular exercise, you expel carbon dioxide faster than you would normally. This gives the hydrogen ions time to accumulate. Cardio cardiac output. <coughs> This, the volume of blood the heart pumps in a period of time, in a period of one minute, increases from the typical five liters per minute up to forty liters per minute during strenu strenuous exercise. <coughs> Long term, decrease in resting heart rate because the rigors of regular exercise require so much work from the cardiovascular system. Sedentary periods become even easier for the heart. By comparison, the heart eventually becomes more efficient and no longer needs to beat as quickly to the supply body with blood while at rest. Stroke volumes increase at rest. Resting heart is able to slow down because the heart is now trained to pump a larger quantity of blood with every beat. Improved circulation in response to the need to supply the muscles with more oxygen during exercise. The body increases its number of capillaries, the smallest blood vessels in the body. Existing capillaries will open wider. Blood volume increases. The vo body produces a great number of blood cells in order to keep the muscles supplied with oxygen during heavy exercise. 
the respiratory system, short term. An increase in breathing rate, this is due to the muscles demanding more oxygen increasing carbon dioxide levels. Increased tidal volume, the amount of air inhaled in an ex or exhaled in a single breath. Neutral and chemical control, the brain is responsible for the control of the breathing rate in the body. The breathing process involves two different actions. <coughs> Inspiration refers to the active process. An expiration refers to the passive process. Neural and chemical factors control breathing in the human body. Stretch receptors in the lungs detect the increase in the rate and depth of breathing. More oxygen can get to the lungs, which means that more air gets to your lungs, which helps you breathe better. Improves blood at uh, long term. Improves blood and oxygen delivery to all vital organs of the human body. The lung. Uh, the number of alveoli increase and this increases the amount of air in your lungs. Increased breathing rate, the solidation ensures aerobic respiration in your body cells, making it possible for healthy people to enjoy all benefits of aerobic exercise without any major problems. Exercise exposes your lungs to stronger rushes of airflow. Aerobic exercise in particular exposes your lungs to strong and constant rushes of air. This activity helps clear mucus in your lungs. The skeletal system. Short term. The bones and joints are avascular. That is, they have little or no blood supply. To keep joints healthy, stop cartilage from drying out and keep cartilage lubricated and nourished. The joints produce an oil-like substance called synovial fluid. Exercise increases the production of synovial fluid, which keeps joints lubricated. Synovial fluid production increases the range of movement available at the joints. Increased bone density can prevent a condition called osteoporosis, which is the weakening of bone and increased likelihood of suffering fractures. When exposed to regular exercise, ligaments become stronger and are more resistant to injury. Long term, muscle size increase is mainly due to the muscle ability to adapt to stress over a period of time which increases them in size. Blood, su blood supply to muscles increases due to long term exercise but the improving delivery of various nutrients, minerals and vitamins to muscles and making them more effective and faster at regenerating after injury or workout. Cramp may occur because of overexercise, lack of nutrients like magnesium or bad blood circulation where muscles do not receive enough oxygen. Muscle oxygen trains muscles to work more efficient and efficient effectively by working together. Thank you for listening.